so my name is Catherine Rybund, and uh, I work for Havas Digital, a company that helps marketers manage their digital ad spend across websites like Facebook, Yahoo, Twitter, Google, and many others across the world. So specifically, what I do is manage data platforms, the biggest one of which is called Onemis, which is an analytics platform that houses all the data relative to our clients' digital campaigns. And that data comes in the form of um, impressions, clicks, or sales, like you see plotted on this graph, that we look at across dimensions, such as campaigns. So here you have um, campaigns such as display, search campaigns, or social campaigns. Now, if we drill down, we have another level of dimension, which is website that we can look at. And you have websites here plotted, Facebook, uh, Google, Yahoo, etc. If we drill down even further, we would go down to the user level. So we house every impression, click, and sale of any users that has been exposed to one of our client's campaigns. And that allows us to reconstruct um, exposure path such as this, for example, in which a user would uh, have clicked a, uh, a, um, an ad on Facebook, maybe viewed a video on Yahoo, tweeted, and uh, ended up clicking on a search ad on Google before buying, let's say, a pair of shoes for $100. Now, the challenge of attribution is about how we credit each one of these touch points for this 100% revenue and calculate an ROI. So the industry standard is that the last click before the purchase gets 100% of the revenue, which clearly is wrong, because none of these other websites that have contributed to this user finding his pair of shoes um, get contributed for, uh, get, sorry, get, uh, get credited for um, any of the fraction of that sale. So the question is, how do we find a methodology to spread this $100 across all these different touch points in a way that makes sense, i.e. a way that we don't make up, a way that makes mathematical sense. And that forces us to build an algorithm that is fairly sophisticated on vast amounts of data, because we have to look at every impression, every click, every conversion of the set of campaign we want to analyze. And those campaigns come typically in orders of magnitudes of billions of rows on a total of 25 terabytes of data. So that's quite hard. Uh, and now that I hopefully have gotten everyone to sympathize uh, with how hard the challenge is, I will hand over to Nick uh, for an outline of the solution that we've built. Okay, thanks, Catherine. So fundamentally, the approach that we take to solve this attribution problem is for each campaign that we want to do a full multi-event attribution for, we build a bespoke predictive model uh, in close to real time. And we make that model such that we can extract the uh, causal information from it to do uh, an appropriate attribution. The software we use to do this is called Miro. And as Catherine mentioned, the fundamental problem that we have is that the data lives in a data warehouse, a Greenplum data warehouse, and even to extract the amount of data we want to build the model on would take more time than we really want to take to deliver the result back to the user. So the way that we get around this is Mira has a switch. When we're in development mode, figuring out the best way to do uh, multi-event attribution, it runs in a fairly standard fashion where Mira reads its data from files, um, calculates everything itself using its own native backend, which is a mixture of C and Python, and then writes results back out to files. But Miro has a switch which allows us to uh, switch when, when we go to production mode, um, and exactly the same sequence of commands causes all the heavy lifting to be done by the database instead. So Miro figures out what to do, but whenever it needs a big piece of computation done on a piece of data, it just issues SQL to the database to do that. And for me, this is kind of magic because I tried to do this 15 years ago uh, at my previous analytics company called Quadstone when we worked very closely with Teradata, which was head and shoulders above any, database, any other database at the time for analytical tasks. And we simply couldn't do it. We found that there was nothing we could do working very closely with Teradata to match the performance of a native application at that point. Uh, but today, it actually works. And so this is in use at production at Havas. And the way it works is our typical user uh, up here um, lives in Artemis and uh, makes a request for a particular attribution to be done, a multi-event attribution to be done. That request goes to Miro. 
which uh, identifies the right data in the database, builds a bespoke model to uh, figure out the correct attribution weighting, uses that to perform an attribution, and returns the results straight to the user who's still living in Artemis. So let's take a look at Miro. Uh, Miro is slightly unusual in that one of its interfaces, the one we're using, uh, is a command line in the browser, which means that I type commands and usually it obeys. So as a, as a silly example, um, one of the things I can do is ask for a fortune cookie, uh, and it should give me one. Um, I also have on this uh, Apple supercomputer in front of me a full copy of, of Green Plum, uh, of the single node edition. So I'm going to connect to that with my default credentials by saying DBSU. And then in that database, I have a table called colors, which has uh, a subset of the normal data that we use for attribution modeling, for multi-event modeling. So I'm going to ask to use that by saying dbuse minus o n colors. Um, and what happens here is the ver oh, no, 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 that's OK, actually. I mistyped. Um, dbuse minus o, o n colors. You see, it's, it's real. It's a live demo. Um, and what happen what's happening now is not that, that Miro is extracting the data from the database. It's just making a connection to it and reading back some metadata. And having made that connection, I can now do obvious things like just asking it to show me the first few records. Uh, and you can see Miro likes to use color to emphasize differences within the data set. In the case of display ads, one of the pieces of information I have is the site that the ad was shown on. So a, a typical simple analytical task that I might want is just to show a breakdown of the data uh, by these sites. So I can do that by saying x minus pi by site. And what happens there is um, Miro constructs the appropriate SQL, asks the database to compute that breakdown over whatever volume of data it is, and then presents the results back graphically. And I can clearly do you know, simpler things than that, like just counting the number of conversions that we had. Um, or calculating uh, an average selling price, uh, an average selling rice, yes. You know, it's much harder typing on stage than, anyway. Um, or I can do more sophisticated things like building attribution models, like doing the data preparation necessary for that, like actually using a model that we've built to perform attribution. Um, so let's look at an example of building a model. I obviously don't have to type all the commands myself. I have them in a script, in a, in, in a file. I can use that. So I'm just going to ask Miro to execute this script by saying dot CDT. Now, this model is going to be a decision tree model that's, that's just doing last click attribution. In other words, it's going to look at conversions and non-conversion events and try and figure out what things tend to precede them. And it's not going to tell us anything particularly surprising. Um, it's just telling us that um, people who click, sorry, I should say the, the, uh, the bluer segments are high conversion segments and the greener ones are lower conversion segments. Um, and so it's just telling us that users who click tend to purchase more than users who don't, which is not a, a huge surprise. That ads with higher click-through rates tend to perform better in terms of conversion than ads with lower click-through rates. And just slightly more interestingly at the bottom, that lower prices, lower CPCs actually tend to be associated with higher conversion, which is a known brand effect. So I'm going to finish by just building a real uh, multi-event attribution model on this data. Um, that's not a decision tree model. The point of showing you the decision tree model wasn't anything about that toy model. It was just the process that I, as an analyst, type simple analytical kind of Unix-style commands to get analytical tasks done. And without my needing to know anything about SQL or how the database works, I can cause the right thing to happen. So what we're seeing here is Miro going through building a model, uh, an attribution model, and then performing various breakdowns with it and, and, and returning the results. And the magic thing is, although Greenplum is an extremely powerful MPP database, at the end of the day, it's just a dumb database. It doesn't know how to build these attribution models. All the application logic, all the modeling logic, actually sits in Miro, where we have complete control over what we do. All that's happening is whenever there's anything that involves really trawling over all the data, as opposed to just metadata or summary results, um, a call goes out to Greenplum to do the work, and it comes back in. As I, as I said earlier, we can do that either um, we can use it in that mode for production, or we can work off files when we're not in production. So the final thing that's come up here is a breakdown that allows us to compare what's the result on this particular data set of the model we've just built in terms of how the attribution ought to work. 
And the answer is the red blob is how much is attributed to the last influence, which is 52, 53%, and all the rest is being spread over the rest of the uh, event stream. So thank you. I'd just like to hand back to Catherine, who will tell you what all that means for Havas. So what, what that's done for us is uh, take a process that used to take hours when you ha we have to do uh, data extractions down to minutes, uh, which is really the speed at, we, at which we need it for the business, uh, now that we have every part of the architecture doing what it's best at. So on that note, thank you for your attention. Thank you.